Sometimes I think about life and its complexities. I think about how mysterious life is. I think about the good things, the bad things, and even the ugly things. Believe it or not, one of the things that I sometimes ponder over is death. And yes, I know that ideally, some of us would rather not go there, and I get it. But the truth is, whether we choose to go there or not, death is a part of our journey. It is so real that someday, somehow, each and every one of us is going to come face to face with it. In the course of my adult life, I have come to understand better the importance of birth and death and the significance of how the journey that lies in between the two really is. And that is one of the things that inspires me to live my best life because we're not here forever. Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to my positive space. My name is Araya, a.k.a. Mrs. A. On this channel, we talk about all things becoming the very best version of ourselves. So if this is the first time you've clicked on my video, relax and enjoy. But before I get into today's video, I would like to say that strictly for adults only. So if you are not an adult, I'm going to give you a minute or a moment, I should say, to please click away. This video has been inspired by some deep self-reflections that I have recently made. And I strongly believe that it will benefit you from hearing this. So let's get right into it. A couple of months ago, my friend had news that her beloved father had passed away from a very short illness. The dreadful news was finally here. This was a blow to all of us. And she had to do what she had to do. So the ceremony and everything is all done. And the rest, we'll have to figure out. This is life. And this is so real. Rest in peace, Mr. Apia Agui. You will be remembered for the wonderful man that you were. Thank you for being a blessing to our world. Not long ago after this news, I also heard of another death. This time, it was a family that I didn't know personally, but the story was so painful. A family of four, mom, dad, and two daughters, aged nine and four years old, alongside another couple who had been apparently married for 25 years. They were all killed on the motorway in an accident. This was in an area close to Wakefield in West Yorkshire. And the painful part is that they left behind their 11 years old daughter. As she happened to be somewhere else at the time of the dreadful accident. This is definitely not how anyone should exit this earth. But unfortunately, it has happened to someone. And again, this is life. My heart goes out to the family, especially to the young girl, who has literally lost her whole world in just one day. The interesting thing is, around the same time that these things are happening, a child is born, someone is getting married, someone is having a baby. Life is basically going on as if nothing is happening, as if people are not getting the bad news. Nothing stops because we have bad news. Nothing stops because we have even the worst news. But in the midst of all the heartache, there is a profound lesson. That is, we're not on this earth forever. Death is a stark reminder of the impermanence of life. It teaches us the value of cherishing our loved ones while they are still here, not when they're gone. Imagine how differently we would live if we knew that we only had one month, one week, one day, or even one moment left here on this earth. 
I just want to give you a moment to ponder. What would you have done? Spend more time with those you love? Would you let go of grudges and focus on what truly matters? These are the questions we must ask ourselves every single day because it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference on how we treat people, on how we relate, on how we live our lives, the choices that we make. Somebody might say, oh, let's not dwell on these things. Let's not dwell on, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, we need to talk about it. And we will talk about it because there are people who do not, who do not realize the intensity of this reality. And this is very evident in the way they live and relate to others. What do I actually mean by this? Some husbands are no longer wearing their crowns. They've lost it. Disrespecting their wives in every shape, manner or form that you can possibly think about. Talking to them anyhow, in front of people, they don't care. They give the women no say in whatever they do. They cheat on them, they disrespect the woman's families. Why did you even marry them in the first place? Because your actions do not match with what you went there initially to do in the first place. You should be either in or out. Don't stay in there and embarrass yourself. It's simply not worth it. This is the worst part. Some of these guys have young kids. The emotional damage they are causing to these kids you have no idea. Every child has a special bond to their parents. But for the mother, it's a whole different ballgame. Women are the ones who carry the kids. So a child has a special bond with the, with, the, with the mother. So if you're mistreating their mother in front of them, what do you expect? Some men have no awareness of the importance of not disrespecting their other half in front of the kids. You are just creating an emotional stain on the memory of that child because some of them grow up very disinterested in men. All they ever saw was their dad being so disrespectful to their mother. And I mean, constantly. Now let's go to the women. Let's leave the men a bit and go to the women. Some women cheat. In fact, from what I've heard, some women cheat more than men. Oh yes, these days, you know, cheating is on the rise. Women are like, bro, these men have been taking the front seat for a long time, so we're taking the front row now. Hmm? Okay. And some women are so disrespectful to their spouse, it's not even funny. But some show respect to their spouse, but not to their in-laws. I did respect in course because I don't trust a woman who claimed to respect their husband but not their in-laws. If you respect me, you will respect my family. Ever heard the saying, love me, love my dog? Yeah, that one. And some women will not cheat or disrespect, but they will manipulate the men emotionally. Especially the good ones. She'll be crying crocodile tears just to get the man to do something that they want. Just for selfish gains, some women are very tactical and they'll do everything to create a barrier between the man and his biological family. I don't really know what the real intentions for why different women do that, but I can only imagine that it probably is to create a sense of um, maybe less interruption for them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But this is how I see it. People are complete. Or they feel a sense of wholeness when different aspects of their lives are good. So if they have a good relationship with you at home, they have a good relationship with their biological family, their colleague, their friends, their community, etc. It impacts on their well-being positively. It will interest you to know that some men also do this. I just don't know. I don't understand. I said, if anyone knows the reason, please do me a favor. I share it in your comments. Put for the reason in your comments. I appreciate that because I really want to know. Is it insecurities? Like, what is it? I have seen these things on social media where some men have the arrows to tell their in-laws 
to leave their wives alone. You know, just like the women are doing, some men also doing that. Don't come close to my wife, this, that, and that. People forget. Like, don't get this. It just doesn't work like that. I need you to think about this deeply. Living with intentions mean making every moment count, exploring every opportunity, and making choices that reflect our values and beliefs. So when you treat people like that, does it truly connect or reflect your values? Treat people right, be nice to people. You'd never know what's round the bend. Let's leave behind hatred, envy, bitterness, selfishness. Let's learn to leave our past behind. Men learn how to treat women with kindness. Women learn how to treat men with kindness. Let us be kind in our societies. These days, madness in the whole world. Some of the things I've been watching on, like, I've been seeing in the news and stuff. Sometimes it literally blows me. I'm just like, is this really happening in the same world that I live? Death is an inescapable part of this journey, whether you like it or not. Every heartbeat, every sunrise, every laugh, and every tear are truly irreplaceable treasures. We must strive to live our best lives because tomorrow is simply not guaranteed. How often do you find yourself postponing your dreams, delaying your happiness and putting off the things that truly matters? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll tell them I love them later. I'll pursue my passion someday. Tomorrow, maybe? But what if tomorrow never comes? What if later is too late? Can we afford to gamble with time? The most precious and unpredictable resource that we actually possess. Let me bring you to reflect on this, if you will. And back again to my question. If today were your last day, will you waste it in regret, anger, or worry? Or will you embrace every moment, express your love, and chase your dreams? These are the questions that we must ask ourselves every day because they hold the key to living a fulfilled and meaningful life. What legacy will you leave behind? Will it be one of missed opportunities and, you know, unspoken words? Or will it be a testament to a life that is fully lived, a life that touched others and made a difference? Are we living in such a way that when our time comes... We can look back without regret. Are we prioritizing what truly matters? Cherishing our relationships and pursuing our passions. We're pursuing our dreams. And even when we are in a relationship, we don't care about the other person. It's just me, 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 me. That is not a true reflection and essence of life. So I'm going to urge you today to start today. Tell your loved ones how much they mean to you. You need to pursue that dream. Live with purpose, passion and presence. Let us not wait for tragedy to jolt us into beginning to appreciate the beauty and fragility of life. We need to choose to live intentionally, savoring every moment and making the most of the time that we have now. Life is a magnificent journey, one that starts with our very first breath and ends with our very last. It's a journey that is filled with countless experiences, emotions and opportunities, good, bad, hard, you know, difficult, sweet, whatever. The mere fact that we have life is an extraordinary gift, one that offers us a chance really to explore the world around us, to learn, to grow and to love. The only thing you have is the present moment. So be intentional. It is the moment of joy, love and connection that truly define us.
Every moment we have is precious. Be grateful for the simple joys, the laughter, the love, and even the challenges for the all shape who you really are.